I'm Caspar uh, de Bok. I'm uh, head of the science shop for biology at Utrecht University in the Netherlands, and I'm also the coordinator of the international network of science shops and uh, uh, the EU-funded project the ISNET, which is about improving science shop networking. Well, most people, especially from a North American context, don't know what a science shop is. Could you still you give us a basic description of what a science shop is and why it's important? Well, uh, a science shop, it's, it's, it's a unit that's uh, uh, doing uh, research support for, com for community groups in, uh, in giving them uh, access to uh, scientific information, to scientific knowledge, but also give them the possibility to use science in their daily lives, in their uh, struggle with their uh, environment in an ur urban uh, region, and it gives access to science. And other, on the other hand, it gives uh, scientists uh, an understanding of uh, the public needs for research and for science, uh, scientific information. Right. So, so why is the scientific part important? Why can't citizens just organize themselves and come up with answers or lobby or go to their politicians? Why is it important for, to use science? Well, because with science you also can create arguments. And you can, uh, uh, it's not only uh, thinking of things, but also you can give it a kind of proof that you can show that, that things are as they are. And, uh, so you need to have some evidence and with uh, scientific information, with science or with research, you can get this uh, this evidence. Right. And this evidence, this information is often not available for people outside the academia or, or outside the research institutes. Okay. Can you give us an example of some of the projects that you've worked on? And, and how would you... Say, say I was a, a community organization and I had a question, what would happen? Well, I think an interesting uh, project, as an example, is a project that came from a, a neighborhood group in the, uh, in the Netherlands, in the, in the area where there's a lot of bulk production, the tulips. Uh, those people, they, they, uh, they had a question about the, the concentration of uh, pesticides uh, they bring in their homes because of the use of the pesticides in the, the, the bulb production. So they spray the bulbs and the particles are uh, maybe transported to the houses so people might be exposed to, uh, to uh, residues of uh, those pesticides. So they questioned uh, the health risk and then they, they just phoned uh, uh, a science shop, the science shop, my science shop in this case, and we tried to figure out what, what they really question. So we, we tried to figure out what is your really need for, uh, for research. Is it research you need or maybe it's just communication with some other people. So we tried to, 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 to reformulate their request and it turned out that there was a need for scientific research to, to meet their needs. So then we started the project and we started uh, thinking about what research uh, do the, does this group need and we always did it in cooperation with the group. So there was a mutual understanding of uh, what we were doing, what uh, they uh, wanted us to do. And in, uh, in the end we created a project uh, where a student could do a, a master, uh, a part, a part of his master thesis. Uh, so this student was supervised by, uh, by an expert on uh, risk uh, assessment uh, sciences and it was part of the graduation uh, of the, the, the curriculum of, of the students. So what happens to the students afterwards? You know, if, if a student, are students that are involved in science shop different than other kind of students that aren't involved in science shops? Well, I think you have two types of students that are involved in science shops. Those who do want to work on community-based research projects who like do like the community aspect of the research and but you also have some students who just do like the topic and regardless whether it's uh, uh, related to, to a community group or it's really related to the scientific research within the university but I think especially the first group of students is most interesting for uh, for the science shops and those are uh, the students you can train in, uh, in doing uh, future jobs. Uh, so you can offer them a job uh, opportunity or you can offer them at least uh, some tools for future, uh, for future jobs. And what's uh, remarkable that most of the students, or many students at least, they do not know about community relations. They do not know about communication, about uh, research, about science with community. And that's what they learn uh, by, by science shop project as well. Right. And so have you been, have the science shop been around long enough that some of these students 
when they go out into public life or into other organizations? Do they follow different life patterns or do they make decisions differently? Yes, I, I, I do think so. Uh, if you, for instance, we, we, we're running a course now on, uh, on uh, the, the, the research as an advisor and what you notice is that people say, well, this is what I like to do. Now I know what, what I like. I do not want to become just a regular researcher, but this makes clear that I can use uh, research. I can make the research applicable for, uh, for, for citizens. And so they make a move from being uh, uh, a, a straightforward researcher to, uh, to a, a community-based researcher. Okay. And how does the university benefit from, from supporting the, the science shop? Well, the university, they benefit uh, because we have strong relations with uh, community groups. So it's, it's, they benefit uh, because of uh, their regional function and the relations with community. But on the other hand, they also benefit because of the, the, uh, the learning of students. So they have students who do learn different things and get additional skills. So they, are, uh, they have different uh, opportunities after their gradu graduation. And it's, it's also kind of PR for, uh, for, the for the universities, yes. Okay. If, what would you say, I mean, the science shop at, at your university has been around since when? Since 78. Uh, right, it's so it's been, it was part of that student, that original student movement, and yep. you've endured. So, so what would you say to something, to a university that's just getting started now? Where should they start? What are, what are some of the basic, fundamental things that you need to be involved in? I think uh, one of the basic things is you need support. Uh, you need a, an infrastructure to get, to get it done. But do not start building just the infrastructure. You need to, to start with just uh, some staff members who, are, who do like the concept of uh, the community-based research. Start with a pilot project. There, there must be at least a research question around uh, in, in any region. And just start with some staff members who can, who can give it a go. They can find some students who do the projects. But every st uh, staff member has to do some supervision at the university. So whether it's 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 a subject that's relate directly related to the to the to the, to the core uh, research of, of the group, or whether it's related to a community group, the staff member they can often they can choose what what they think are interesting projects, and they can they can start a pilot project. So what is what is the the highlight of your career and what are some of the, the, the barriers that you're running into? So maybe start with the barriers, yeah. you know, the, the challenges that, you know, keep you awake at night and keep you frustrated and how are you dealing with them? And then let's let's go to, to, the, to the highlight of the things that you think are the best. Well, I think we, uh, one of the barriers is, 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 is the recognition. Working in a university is, is a different culture. It's, it's, it's a culture that's different from working in a community. And community-based research often is not seen as really research because it doesn't bring in the, the peer-reviewed uh, articles in high-level uh, journals, magazines, but it brings in uh, not knowledge transfer to the local community. But this knowledge transfer is not very much uh, rewarded in the, 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 the traditional university system. So we permanently have to struggle, fight, or, or whatever you call it, with uh, the, the, the traditional university system to, see, to, to show that we do have impact on uh, society. And maybe we do not have uh, the, the biggest impact on research uh, themes, but we do have impact on the, 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 the use of uh, research. Okay. Now, so what's the highlight of your career so far? The highlight so far, uh, I think uh, it's, it's, it's the growing of, of, of a network. To see that there are more and more uh, people, more and more institutions uh, interested in, in the concept of community-based research, in the concept of science shops. So to see that it's not only the, 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 the small science shop itself, but there are so many people involved in the same kind of work. And to, to realize that it's not only us who are doing this, but there are so many more who are doing it and bringing together these people. If you had a crystal ball, what would you like to see in 10 years? Where do you think that, where do you think interactions around science and society are going? Well, I hope uh, towards the, uh, solving the, the barriers. So 
to a real recognition of community-based research also in the, 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 university, the traditional university systems. You see the importance of just the, the linking of science and society. So I think that's, that's, that would be a very uh, beneficial for both science and society. So what I would like to see, for instance, in Europe is that, that uh, the European research area and the European uh, Commission pays a lot of attention to the, the uh, society dimension of the use of research and not only in a one-way direction uh, as the traditional science communication is but in the bottom-up approach of the recognition of uh, society needs.